I'm afraid that, um, firstly, when talking about the European Union, we have to deconstruct the myths which are connected with it. Normally, the story goes as follows. After 300 years of fierce wars, and the worst then in the 20th century, we, after 1945, decided to create the European Union in order to abolish national competition and contradictions uh, among nations. But this is not only the half of the story, because the Second World War was not only and not primarily a war between nations, it was a war between fascism and the civilized world. And fascism came up in the European societies because of world economic crisis. And world economic crisis came up because of the application of a social and economic model, which exactly is the same as it is now applied by the European Union policies. So the main idea, the main idea after 1945 was to create a political space based on an economic policy and on a social policy which would allow to compromise the interest of the uh, working classes and the ruling classes. And I would say that this is not a question of historical interest. This leads to the core of the problem of nowadays as um, the relation of power meanwhile has shifted in a, in a way that the ruling classes and the elites in the leading European countries decided to get rid of this. And of course the crisis has structural reasons and we must not underestimate the crisis. But what we see since 2008 and 2009 is increasingly that the crisis is not uh, the result of a class egoistic policy of the ruling uh, circles, but is also an instrument to enforce and to enhance these policies. And this we have, we have to cope with. And I tend to say that um, national questions always have to be tackled in a pragmatic way, meaning uh, we should not so much look into that what somebody may call a European identity or a national identity. I do not believe in the one or the other. Maybe I say this in a personal way. My father survived uh, a concentration camp. Then he came back to Austria and uh, he touched down in an environment where all the peoples who brought him to the concentration camp were still living. So what about national identity? It's about national difference. It's about fighting on interpretations of a nation's history and of a nation's future. And the same goes for Europe. And that's why I would say, if we talk about Europe, we should not be so keen to develop this European sentiment. We should look at it instrumentally. Yes, indeed, 40% of the gross national product of uh, an average uh, European society is distributed on a national state basis. And that's why we need democracy, that's why we need parliament, that's why we need sovereignty. But at the same time, and this is the, the core idea of the European Union as it developed uh, after uh, the 80s and the 90s, and which is laid down in the Maastricht Treaty, uh, the context of this national dispute and distribution is set by European, not so much European institutions, but European markets, which of course are power relations. And the question is, how can we challenge these power relations, namely transnation, transnational capital, transnational corporations, financial uh, markets, and financial institutions on the European level. And this, of course, needs politics. And for the ruling class, and uh, by the way, Hayek's idea uh, was not to create strong European institutions. Hayek's idea was to leave 
the governance of uh, the economic space in Europe to the markets, including, by the way, uh, the private creation of money. So, it's always from, from the party of the suppressed and exploited classes that policy is, is required. And I would say, to come to an end to this first contribution, that uh, the challenge now is to create convergences between not only the different movements at the place, but also between the different political actors in order to accompany national struggles and national demands by a European perspective. And for the moment, I would say that one of the key issues of this European perspective is to be in that sense in solidarity with the Greeks, that their decision has to be respected by the European institutions. If, for example, the Greeks decided to leave the Euro, then of course the left would, would have to be solidary with them. But if the, the Greeks decide otherwise, the left has to defend the idea that not the Greeks have to change their attitudes towards austerity, but the European Union has to change their attitudes towards the Greeks. And this, I would say, this is the challenge, because at the end of the day, national consensus or transnational consensus consists in agreeing that a certain transfer of resources from one class to the other, from one region to the other, has to take place. And the political and the cultural weakness of the European left actors consists exactly in that, that we don't want uh, or we don't dare to touch openly and frankly the problem that in case we want to keep the European Union and the European integration as a process alive, we have to agree to a transfer union, to a transfer of resources, and this requires political legitimacy. And this is the question of uh, European democracy, which from my point of view would be, um, so to say, the connecting link uh, between the national struggles and uh, European dimension, which we have to add to it. Thanks. Okay, thank you.